All right, welcome to the experimental part of Lab 5. May the Lord be with you as you work through all this stuff. And I hope uh, all this circuit work is uh, working out for you. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, this particular experiment, we went through uh, how we use Kirchhoff's loops to analyze it. Now you're actually going to measure it. And so you can see up on the, on the screen here, uh, we have a voltage. We're going to measure V1 right here. And then we're going to measure the current going into R1 over here. So you can see the meters are two entirely different hookups. And voltage voltages, the voltmeter has a very, very high resistance. So when an electron comes across here, you want all those electrons to keep going and drop all their energy here. But if you want to check out how much energy they're carrying, you let a couple of little electrons go down here and then you can measure those because they're all carrying the same potential. So you're looking at the potential difference from here to here. So you let a few go down there. And since the resistance is so high, it doesn't affect the circuit hardly at all. Okay? So what's nice about a voltmeter, and this is what the multi multimeter looks like. It's got two sides. I'll pull the plugs for a second here. It's got a bunch of different options you can choose from. The first one, by the way, is to measure resist, uh, the resistance. It's called an ohm meter. Now this is, this is called a DMM, which is a digital multimeter, which means it's got many different meters built into it. So if I want to measure resistance, I put it on that omega symbol right there. And if you look over here, you can see it right there. And I plug in the red here, and the black always goes in the common down here. And then you just take the probe without any, anything hooked up at all. So like if I go right over here, I've got a resistor on the table. So before you hook the resistors into the circuit, you want to measure the resistance without anything else hooked up. Now you can also use the color code on the resistor. Now you don't want to put your thumb on both sides because your body actually has some resistance. So it says 1.193 kilo ohms. So it's 1,193 ohms right here. But if I go with the color code, uh, it has brown, red, red. Brown is one. By the way, if you want to know how it goes, black is zero, brown is one, and then it follows the rainbow. So red is two, Roy G. Biv red, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, uh, violet, then gray is number eight, and white is number nine, okay? But most of the time, the colors are usually at the bottom of the spectrum uh, for most of them. So you see a lot of oranges and a lot of reds and blacks and browns. So anyway, this particular resistor here, I know it's a four significant figures, but if I went with the bands, this would be uh, one for brown, red is two, so it'd be 12, and then the third band is the power of 10, and so this would be 100, 10 squared, so 10 to the 2 power. So 100 times 12 is 1,200, okay? But I know it to four siggies from my meter. So you got to measure all your resistance values before you do the experiment. Now the resistance side is the the voltage. So this is all set for voltage measurements. You just change it to you change it to VDC for voltage direct current. Okay, double check voltage, and then this is the common right here. Now this is a super simple measurement to make. These probes allow you to make voltage measurements quickly. So uh, you can see up there in the in the drawing up there. If I want to get the voltage, I would just go like right there. This side of the battery, that side of the battery, and I would get the voltage, okay? And I would do the same thing across all those resistors in the circuit. Now I have the whole circuit set up right here on the table. Let me get on this side. You can see I got my red uh, power coming out of here, set for 10 volts. Now this is an ammeter, I'm going to talk about that in one second. We're going to actually set up an ammeter so you can see how it's done. So the current goes in here, this is common over here. This is the high side of the meter, so current comes in here and then it comes out here. All right, and it says there's 8.24 milliamps flowing in the circuit right now. Now if I want to measure the voltage, all I do is I take my probe 
and I just go across the resistor. So this is resistor one in the picture, all right? Straight across is resistor two, like that. Here, let's see what the value is. All right, and resistor two is 6.98 volts. Resistor one, resistor one's really important, by the way. 3.079, 3.080. You can see three SIGIs. Now, I'm gonna put the red up on top here. And you see, current's actually flowing the other way. It's not flowing from red to black, it's flowing from black to red, so that means it's going up. Okay, see point one three three, and if I flip it, it says minus one point three three. So remember, I got a positive value when I went like that. So that means current's flowing from positive red to black. Okay, so if I go like that and I get a minus sign, you see it's not going this way; it's going that way. Okay. So it all depends on the resistor arrangement in the circuit. And there's two more. I'm not going to do it for you because they're really quick. But anyway, the volt, volt measurements, you're done in just a second. It's so quick. You turn it off. And I always give you two meters so you can keep them separate. But this is the ammeter. So the second one is we're going to look at how to hook the meter up if it's an ammeter. Now, ammeters go right in the circuit. You see the, the electricity has to flow through the meter. So it's coming out of the power supply going right in the meter and then heading out into the circuit. So this has to have very low resistance. So if you hook this thing up like a voltmeter, you'll short it out because tons of electrons are going to want to go in there because it has no resistance. Electricity always wants to flow the easiest path. So when you hook this thing up incorrectly, so you want an ammeter, but you hook it up like a voltmeter, you will blow the fuse inside the meter and then I have to open it up and change the fuse which is a pain, okay? So I'm gonna leave this guy alone, the 8.24. We'll hook this thing up um, like an ammeter. So to do that, I take one black lead and I plug it into the common. So again, you need that common right there. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna measure, let's measure the current going right into number two right there. So you have to open the circuit right there like that. All right, and um, I'm gonna hook the black lead right there, like that, and then I'm gonna take off the plug, and I can just plug it right into here. I need to turn, turn, turn the meter on, okay? And I can plug it in right there, and you can see 2.53 milliamps. Okay, so the current came through here, went through the meter, came out here, and is going on its merry way. See how that works? So you gotta break the circuit wide open. So if you wanna change to another component now, you keep one, you keep one, uh, one alligator clip lead with you, and then you can just put this right back in the circuit, put the alligator clip back on it, and you're good to go. All right, now, you're gonna measure all those currents, all those voltages, and then you're gonna compare them with the Kirchhoff loop rule. Now here's a battery, a nine volt battery. Now the small size, the small pole on the battery is positive and the big one is negative. Now you can hook it two ways. You could have positive on top or you could have positive on the bottom. So whatever way you put it, you need to record that because you can't come back later and go, oh, well, how did we hook that guy up? So I'm taking resistor five out of the circuit and now I'm gonna hook up battery nine volts. And don't forget to measure the voltage of the battery. Well, in multi-SIM, you can just set it. So that's kind of nice. All right, now what you gotta do is, all you have to do is measure the voltage across R1, all right? So the exper this ex part of the experiment is super fast, but the, what you have to do now is you gotta do Kirchhoff's loop equations all over again, but if you go back, here's all you have to do. I'll just show it to you one more time real quick. You go back to this equation right here, you put your battery in here, all right, your battery goes right here. Now for one circuit, you see if you put plus up on top, when you go from plus to minus, that is a drop. You see over here, if you go plus to minus, that's a drop. If you go from minus to plus, that's a rise. So let's say plus was up here. So this guy is going from plus to minus, so this is minus nine volts. Whereas this guy is going from the minus side 
plus side of the battery, and so this one would be positive 9 volts. So in the C equation, you'd have positive 9 here, and over here you'd have minus 9. That's very important. And then remember, R5 is gone because we took it out of the, out of the circuit. R5 is gone here, so that's easy. There's just zeros when you go plug it into the equation solver. All right, actually, you got to go down here. You see there's a zero here, zero here, zero here. All right, so anywhere there's a five, you just get it out of the equation. All right, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I love these labs. These labs are a lot of fun to do. They're the best when you can actually do hands-on. Uh, but unfortunately, because of COVID, um, we're stuck doing it by simulation. But I at least take you through it so you can see how it's all done. And uh, in a couple labs, I'll just do the experiment for you, and then I'll give you the data. That's coming up shortly. All right. Over and out. Have a great day.